everyone, and welcome to episode number 40 of the Unknown Games Podcast. I cannot believe that we finally made it to 40. That's four zero. That's 40 weeks in a row. That's, was that a year? No, I, I mean, it's not a year. It's getting closer to a year. 52 Wait, weeks really? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's 52 that's... weeks in a year, man. We're almost. Well, yeah, why I know it's 52 <laughs> weeks in a year, but um i was surprised about us doing a podcast for a year but our first one was just after tgs so i mean it kind of makes sense yeah yeah it's true wow it's almost it's almost that time and like i said welcome to the unknown games podcast i'm your host adrian and uh the voice you just heard was uh alex sub Alex. 40 episodes of what's up i'm alex yeah uh, you know if it ain't broke don't fix it that's that's all you can say if it if it ain't broke don't fix it so uh, we are, uh, yeah, we both live here in Japan. We've lived here for about nine, it's nine years, right? Going on 10? Uh, no, it's eight. <laughs> I'm time skipping. So we're, you know, we're, yeah. we're eight going well, on nine. Eight, eight for me. I don't know. Nine for you. When did you move here? I, I, you know, I don't remember. It felt, it's Actually, been so long. It's been like 2013. I feel like 2013 would be seven years done. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to put it down to 2012 for fun. <laughs> okay. Know. Well then, well, yeah. That's yeah. eight years. We'll, we'll, we'll say eight years. We'll, we'll sure. bump it up. And yeah, yeah, we, we, we talk about our, our life here in Japan, of course, a little bit. And then, you know, the number one thing we talk about is video games because we love the video games and what we're playing, what we're doing. And as always, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at UGP underscore cast. And if you like to leave a voice message and we encourage you to leave a voice message, let us know, let us know what you're playing, what your thoughts are, or, you know, I don't, I don't know, just write a nice voicemail did i say write a nice voicemail i mean you can write a review yeah but... you said write a voicemail which is what <laughs> neither of those things are it's not a voicemail it's like but that's a new type yeah. of technology that doesn't exist yet sure. that we will right. get to in the future but you can leave that on uh, anchor.fm backslash ugp cast just go there and there'll, there'll be a link on there so and we'll, we'll have it in the show notes too so that's that's pretty much it today i don't i don't know we i got new internet so i'm happy that i i finally have internet that i pray Pray does not disconnect. I had mm, some super yeah. woes. Alex knows. Alex yeah. knows about the woes. Uh, even... That's good. I'm glad you have internet now. Yeah, I, it, I, I, better I was, internet. I was calling this like broadband dial-up or something, like the next tier of, like it, it disconnected as much as dial-up, honestly, to be high-speed internet. And it was just frustrating. Like ten or fifteen times a day is like a an- is is another level of I could not finish a game of apex i couldn't like valorant was even crazier like valorant i disconnected four times in one match which i was like what can i even do this like is this possible but i don't know that's that is my hope that i do not have to move apartments for the moment and i can just enjoy stable internet stable internet that's all i want yeah i mean you're talking it sounds like you're talking as if you're in from the year like 20 like sorry 2002 or something yeah yeah that, that's what i felt like i felt like i was back in 2002 or, or worse and i mean if you listened to the episode last week you might have heard some of our i had to edit that pretty crazily <laughs> i shifted a lot of the of our dialogue or here and there left and right and lined it up as best as i could but there are some moments i just couldn't fix and i just left it. i was like no just, just yeah i mean I, I, it's not a good to be honest so that, that's that's good to, oh. to yeah my 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 heart warms anyways we're gonna move on into the show we've got a couple of games that we've both been playing i'm still playing last of us 2 i'm almost at the end of it i, I feel like uh if i could divide into thirds i'm in the last leg the last third of it and I, and i'm i have to say that i've been really enjoying the experience and i've i've come back with another just kind of takeaway and and that's just that i'm really intently playing this game i'm <laughs> intently like i'm listening very intently like when there's a cutscene, i'm listening almost if it's like i'm watching shawshank redemption i, I mean like a, you know a really good movie right that you're just every little bit of dialogue and everything because it, there's no music in the background it's just like some rain and then just you know stuff is going down and you're just man man it's gonna be all right right <laughs> and it's tense sure right? yeah uh-huh. and and then when you're playing in the gameplay and they do have like sections where you do of course um you're not in combat you're or you know you're just searching for things but you never really let your guard down and i found myself and i've only done this in one other game i'm walking i just walk i don't run every seldom i'll actually run i'm like okay it's kind of clear i know that but for the most part i've spent most of the game walking in the world 
and looking around and searching and just looking at the sky, the grass, and just really admiring that how much they've crafted this world. Every little bit of it, it's just, I'm in awe. And it just makes me want to walk through it. Have you mm, ever had a game mm. like that where you just want to walk through the world? You, you don't really care about progressing. You just lose track of time in it. Uh, no, I mean I've I play sorry I've played games where I certainly appreciate the world and I like looking around at the environment and stuff like that. Um, but nothing like what you're describing. I, I think for me, like recently in re- recent memory, I, um, for me that was the Blue Protocol Beta, uh, that mm. MMORPG that was in closed beta test in Japan a couple months ago. Right, right. Um, it looks really good. It's really, really good, especially when the sun starts to set in, in the game. I, I love how they... And, and that's a very... Because um, we've both played it, and I really love how they use the art direction in that style. I mean, it just really looks like it's like a water... Po- not, you know, water paint, but like that sky. It's so simple, yet it's so nice to look at. Yeah, it was... Um, uh, it looks really nice. And then for me, the, the other game uh, that I played kind of recently actually was uh, Code Vein. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Code Vein has uh, a couple uh, environments where I don't know. I just really liked how it looked because it, it's kind of like a destroyed world. Right. So right. you can tell like people used to live here. Like there's an early part in the game where you're you're going through a city and just straight up, it's just like a normal um kind of city. There's buildings, there's cars, there's a uh, parking garage, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, there's a point where like you, you're kind of by that city and there's like this huge, tr- I don't know what happened. Um, they actually don't even like, well, they kind of explain it, but most of the stories left up to the imagination of the player and they kind of trickle it down to you. Okay. Um, but there's like this huge, like just hole in the ground and you're just like, how did that get here? And then like, uh, it's still like, I resume earth, but like, yeah, the sun starts to set and it, it there's like a natural beauty to this destroyed environment. And I like to go into that. I, and I, I kind of understand that too. And, and I think what hit me when you said it feels like it was lived in is, is a thing that definitely resonates for me in Last of Us too. It's, it's really like when you go into a shop and without even having to read the sign, you, you know what type of shop you're in, whether it's a sports shop, whether it's a, a, you know, a pharmaceutical place, or you just know what kind of place you're in. And there's, you know, there's flyers and it felt like someone was there. And there's all these these little notes. And I've, I've really kind of engrossed myself in trying to figure out um, these notes that have been left behind by people who are connected to the organizations you're trying to find. Uh, whether they're alive or dead isn't the point. It's just more like what they did when they lived here. And then you kind of imagine, you know, it was just such a better place before all of this, you know, before everything hit the fan. But yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So I, I'll probably finish it around the end of this week and you know after that is of course ghost of tsushima oh my goodness why why do they yeah, have that to ga- make games that game looks like really good and honestly like that game like was not on my radar until like last week when i looked at my first trailer and i was like oh actually you know what that game looks pretty good it looks it looks good and i and i, I kind of blocked it out in terms of just looking at trailers and everything because i'm like you know i'm already going to get it i don't i don't want to see anything else but I did remember saying just a little bit on social media about the way that the sword has its own, like your the way you're handling the sword is kind of intricate or something like that, right? I don't know. I don't know if that was in the trailer that you saw, but um, no, I, I don't recall seeing that. I mean, I was watching the Japanese subtitled version of the trailer that was at a recent event. I, it wasn't state of play. I can't remember. It was it was a pretty recent net event. Okay, um, okay. Where they showed off like 18 minutes of gameplay, and I was watching the Japanese subtitle version of that. It was basically oh. like fighting styles. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this is the samurai style, and then it's just like, I don't know, whatever they're calling samurai style, and they're like, this is ghost style, and it's like stealth combat. Uh, uh, and, yeah, and yeah, to yeah. me, that looked really interesting. So I'm, I'm a pretty big Metal Gear fan, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I really, I really enjoyed playing through Metal Gear Solid Five, because uh, Five is like open world, but it's still a stealth game and right um did you you played five yeah but a little bit you didn't finish it or no no, no i've actually never i've never booted it up i don't okay, even own it well, right, I, I guess i ps plus own it but yeah. right okay so it is open world um well it can be open world but anyways uh you're in afghanistan or other parts of wherever the game takes you and you're free to basically take over any kind of guard post in the way that you want you can approach it 
uh, from any direction that you want. You can use whatever weapons. You can, if you have a sniper rifle. So it's like, oh, I'm going to take out the guard with a sniper rifle, and then I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to uh, take my vehicle and drive really close, and then, uh, you know, do everything hand-to-hand. So you're really open to take down a guard post in the way that you want. And then seeing the the ghost-style gameplay for this uh, reminded me of that, and I'm like, oh, that looks really fun. Like, that is something that I'd probably be really into, so. Wow. I, I remember them talking about that, and I think that 18-minute trailer, that was from a couple of months ago, or last month. It was whenever the Xbox had their, you know, their their gameplay reveal of the third parties, and then, like, the day after, Sony dropped that in English, and it was just 18 minutes of Tsushima, and no one's like, what the heck? And uh, I was like, yeah, it's something it, or other, yeah. It, it could be that same one, cause, but I just remember, like, I saw one minute, and I said, nope, turn it off, I'm good. You're going to get surprised. You want to get surprised. I, I want to get the, surprised. Yeah. I haven't, I, you know, I'm not usually like that with games, but for Last of Us and Final Fantasy VII and, and for Tsushima, like, I want to be surprised. I don't want to, I don't even want to know what blade of grass color is just going to be flying in front of my face when I'm, you know, on my horse. And, you know, I, I, it's interesting you brought that up about um, Tsushima and the kind of ghost style. And I feel like that's how I'm approaching a lot of the fights in Last of Us 2. Like, I, I don't, specifically um feel like i'm locked into doing it either an action oriented way you know i do have my weapons even though ammo is scarce i'm playing on normal you will get more ammo but i i'm really compelled to just stealth through as much as possible and and i've been noticing that i can just completely skip fights if i'm if i'm really good now i usually i mess up like halfway and there was a really funny encounter i had where I was stealthing and I was using the bow. I was hiding enemies. I was doing everything right. And I'm like 10 minutes into this little encounter, right? And I go up the stairs and a guard walks by. And they, the guards in this game, they kind of take their time. Uh, and sometimes they don't exactly go back on the exact same route. They'll kind of deviate just a little bit. And this guard walked by and I opened the door. And she turned. <laughs> and... All I heard was, we got an intruder. And that opened up an entire 10 minutes extra of just, oh, you got to be kidding me. <sighs> it was fun. Oh, just, just, yeah. just the last moment, and the, the guard kind of turned around. Yeah, yeah kind of ruined, ruined your thing. Ruined, she ruined it. I was going to yeah. perfect that little section. And I was clean. I was clear. Because, you know, once guards get called in, you know, they just magically spawn. I don't know if it's like that in Metal Gear. If they just magically get some reinforcements, you're like, I don't remember you being there, but mm. uh, I wouldn't say magic guards in Metal Gear Five. Do you have a a, a, a schedule which also mm. kind of adds the fun? If you know when guards are going to switch, like you know when they're going to change their shift, you can use that to your advantage. So it's it's pretty fun, but yeah. So yeah, I've I've been in I've been enjoying that part of Last of Us. Uh, the, there's four different skill trees, and I'll, I'll probably talk about that next week. But I don't know what what else. What are you playing, man? What are you what are you up to? Um, so the Steam sale is going on for, I guess, four more days, but last week I picked up, I, d- I didn't mention this on the podcast today, I can't remember. I, uh, I bought three, so. I bought th- three games. <clears throat> um, I got Alien Isolation because, um, I have a friend who really wants me to play through it. I don't really, I don't even like horror games. I don't like scary games, but, um, I do have a friend who wants me to play through it. So I got it. It's like $10. So hmm, hmm. I got that. Uh, and then I also got, uh, Crosscode, which is a, uh, it's an RPG that's inspired by Super Famicom. I think I did talk about this I think on the podcast. You did. I think you talked about yeah. Cross... Yeah. Co- I don't think you talked about Alien Isolation, but I remember you talking about that because I was like, you know, I cannot... I can't process all of those crazy... There's, there's a lot... It, it's deep. It's deep. Yeah, so I bought that. I bought CrossCode, and then I also bought Ease Memories of Sassetta, which is a remake... Or I guess, sorry. Ease Memories of Sassetta is a remaster of the Vita game, which came out in 2012, which in and itself is a remake of Ease 4. Uh, which came out on the Super Famicom. Uh, huh. So it's really fun. Um, if you have never played an Ease game, I do recommend them. Uh, I, I, there's a little bit of a divide between what we call old school Ease uh, and then modern Ease. So what exactly uh, is Memories the of Sada, what What is the difference? Yeah, old school versus... Is it just like the combat or something? Or is it just like yeah, the storytelling? Yeah, it most, it's mostly the combat pretty much. So the older Ease games, uh, you only control Ada, all the main character. That's kind of like a standard action RPG. And then the modern Ease games, they're still uh, action RPGs, but they employ uh, like a type system. And the best way to describe it is rock, paper, scissors. So you okay. have uh, a party of three, 
and you can toggle like switch between them on the fly. And each character has a type. So for example, it all is slash, and then you have a partner, um, like Dogi or, or whoever, and he's like a crush type. Um okay. and there's also like a pierce type or whatever. And then enemies on the field are weak to certain types. So if you mm -hmm. have like a squishy enemy, you want to use Adol because he's gonna do more damage. But if it's like a, a rock enemy or something, um, Slash isn't going to do a lot of damage, so you're going to switch Dogi because he's better at, at hitting rocks, basically. So actually, it's like an action... Uh, yeah, I guess action, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, like, you know, strategy. Well, not yeah, strategy, and then but yeah, yeah. You, you're going to want to like just switch between your party members uh, pretty rapidly to use the right one for the right enemy. You get surrounded by a bunch of enemies, so the key is swapping, you know, at the right time. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And that's modern ease, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Mary Sasada is a modern ease game that came out on the Vita, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, no, it, it's on PC. It's 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 running pretty decent. Um, you can tell that it's a Vita game because the the UI is. <laughs> oh, is it still Vita? I don't Vita like. It's still just. The Vita. Yeah, <laughs> it's still it has just... these huge buttons, these huge gigantic oh, buttons, because it's it it's it was meant for a touch screen, right? Right, right. So you open the the camp menu, the main menu, and then mm -hmm. you have three buttons on the left side. They're just huge gigantic circles. And then you have three buttons on the right side that they're meant for touch inputs, but you're playing on a keyboard and mouse or a controller, and that's not going to fly. So, I, I, I'm, I'm like visualizing it in my mind. I'm like, oh, I just well, you know, sometimes you wish that they they could kind of go the extra mile for you, but and you change kinda, the UI. It, yeah, yeah, just 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 the UI for me, please. Just yeah. the UI. <laughs> that's why I do I do appreciate ports that consider. Uh, it's just running on a different platform. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, Persona 4 Golden, which launched on PC, uh, did, didn't do that, but uh, that's also a really good JRPG PC port. It, it suffers from the same thing where some buttons are just gigantic wow. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> they're they're um, the in-your-face buttons. In your face. Yeah. But no, that's uh, what I'm playing. It's pretty fun. Uh, I I need to not buy new games, and I need mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. finish uh, what I've been playing. So I've, mm -hmm. I've been trying to play through all the Persona games. Well, not all of them, but Persona 5 Royal and 5 Scramble. I, I feel you. I feel you. And uh, what else am I trying to get through? Maybe just that for now. Um, also, like, Ease 9, which I was playing through in, in Japanese, and... Yeah, I need to finish my my games just especially because more are coming out soon. Ghost of Tsushima is just like looming out there. It's That's like in a week and a, week. two weeks or two yeah. weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Well, thirteen. Well, a little, a little under two weeks, but yeah. Is it thirteen days? Or no, is it's the seventeenth. Okay, okay. It's it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's insane, man. Like games, there's so many good games now. I, I sometimes I wish I could go back to being a kid where I just didn't know any other games existed and I just got one or two and I you know you could you could kind of like wrap your mind around it now it's just like oh my goodness more games uh from the sale i actually so i did end up getting a dusk diver uh which i'm just gonna oh yeah that's interesting i want to see some gameplay of that i you know i started looking at it again i was like okay so i did get the persona vibe from it and then i couldn't tell the combat for a second because i also i i caved and i got assault spy which is kind of like dmc like combat right and then i looked mm -hmm. at both of them together and i realized Dusk Diver is a Dynasty Warriors like combat. It's an action really? RPG, but it's Dynasty Warriors. Because I was like, wait, there's so many enemies on the screen, and then they're using these special combo moves. I'm like, they're not actually comboing, but they're doing like team tag, you know, moves and things like that. And now I realize, yeah. okay, this is this is definitely Dynasty Warriors meets Persona meets uh, probably some other game in there too. But it looks good, and I uh, got Undertale and Guilty Gear XR Rev Two. Sure, that's a newest guilty. I can't remember. That's like, just the, so many. Yeah, I, I had to like look five different times before I bought like, it. Which, like, you make which, sure you got yeah the newest one. There's right? like four different listings on this on the sale. It's like, do you want Guilty Gear XR? Do you want it Guilty Gear XR Rev One? I think yeah, there's even one like, like well, before Rev One. I'm like, what? What? Which is the latest one? Just give me the latest with everything. Okay, so I know there's Guilty Gear XR, which is like the first. No, Sign is the first one, right? I, I, I don't know. This is and it's then, so difficult. And then Revelator is a sequel, right? I think it's Sign and then Revelator. How long right? has Guilty How long has Guilty been, Gear been out? Has it like is Exard been, been Exard, out? Exard, right? Right, right. Um, I don't know, dude. Twenty sixteen or something. Twenty sixteen. And if, then if anyone is listening, by the way, and you're just like, oh, you fools, how do you not know Guilty like the the Guilty Gear? 
I, okay, I think it's Sign and then Revelator and then Rev Two. Two, I believe, is the newest one. I, I, I yeah, Rev Two is definitely the newest one. And <laughs> okay, yo, yo, uh, Kaito, if you listen to the podcast, go uh, leave that voice message on and set us straight. <laughs> I know he's a huge, he's a huge Guilty Gear fan, but yeah, um, I, I, but I, Strive is coming out next year, right? So right, that's, and so that's why I decided to actually kind of get. It. I know it's not going to play the same, and and there was actually an article I was reading, um, about the arc system in terms of they they actually came out and they said like yeah we don't want we want it to be a kind of new experience for everyone of course and we, we all kind of knew that but you know they've been really looking at the feedback of the beta and it's the community is really split i, I mean not the community i think the, the community guilty gear knows what they want and they also know that arc system is giving them a completely different thing than what they want um in terms of it just feels too simple and Arc System is saying that they want it to be simple as in the way that it's so simple that you can easily create combo chains or combo strings. There we go. Uh, but a lot of the communities feels like this. It just feels like Street Fighter, right? Like I have my bread and butter, but it's the same bread and butter. It, it, it gets the damage. It works. It's like five hits. It doesn't feel good, but it, it works, you know, and before Guilty Gear has so many mechanics and systems where you really do feel like you're being creative in how you play. And so that's where the kind of divide is coming. Like they're, I, don't, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if that factored into the whole 2021 decision or not. I, I really don't know. I don't know. I think, I think Arxis, to be honest, I, I, I think Arxis has been going in that direction lately. Um, if you look at their other games like Granblue Fantasy and um, Dragon Ball Fighters, they do have the one-button combos, right? Or the, the simple combos. Right, right. Yeah. Um, in Dragon Ball Fighters, is it one button combo or is it the one, two, three, four combo? I think it's the one, two, three, four. It's like a Gatling combo, but it's even shorter, if I remember. Okay. Because you, you, did you play the Persona fighting games, right? I, I played a little bit when it came out. Okay. Because that's all, that's the one, two, three, four button combo. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so I think they do that on purpose to make it easy to pick up, but then difficult to master. And especially when you get to a game like Dragon Ball Fighters, which has huge appeal like dragon ball is such a huge 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 name that they probably expected a lot of people uh to pick it up despite not really being good at fighting games they don't want to like you don't you don't you don't want to get a, a game and then feel like you're bad at it right right so they i suspect that's why they made the easy combos for fighters but um no just that and also Grand Blue fantasy i feel like they're going they have been going in that direction recently mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, to make it feel like it's easy to, to start but then difficult to master yeah, that, that's definitely true. And, and honestly, I bought it. I want to get Strive and I, I bought it knowing like, OK, I'm not going to, you, you know, I'm not going to really dive super deep into it, but it does have a pretty in-depth story mode. And, you know, like you said, there, there are those kind of easy button features where I can just kind of enjoy the game, enjoy the graphics, enjoy the story. You know, just I mean, it literally just says, hey, we have an anime mode where you can just watch anime. You can watch the game as an anime. I'm like, oh, thank you. Uh, I'll do this, I guess. Cool. For five bucks, eight bucks, you know, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to just kind of messing around in Guilty Gear and kind of, you know, just seeing what it's about more outside of my Yeah, I mean, I, I used to play a lot of Guilty Gear when I was in high school, actually. So I played a lot mm-hmm. of Double X, Double Zex. What is it called? Like, I don't know. I think we even had this. We had this yeah. discussion. No, because I, I don't, cause know. Double, we don't know. Because the one, the one on Dreamcast is Zex, I believe. It's pronounced. It's the letter X, but I believe it's called pronounced Zex. Uh, and then I think XX is pronounced Double Zex. It's an awful is... name, but by the it's an awful name, by the way. But yeah, I put a lot of um, um, Double Zex, I guess, in in high school. And this uh, is exactly when I came in and just called it Double Cross. I remember this episode. <laughs> well, I, well, I I think XX is fine. I yeah. Looks, nice as xx um did you know by the way that when the game came out in english it was published in english or north america as x2 i think because they're like oh xx that's a terrible name really uh, and i agree but it, and we also had bmx triple x have, have you played that game have you played that game i played a demo of that game back in the day i was like this they game had exists. a demo for that game this game existed like yeah man that's was, so funny I think it came do you want to those... do you want to explain you want to explain <laughs> that game for any any listeners who have never heard of that if, game before it's on the gamecube re- by the way it's on the gamecube by the way if i remember completely it is a yeah. game where it is because bmx and like um 
extreme, you know, extreme sports, uh, X Games. Uh, you know, it was kind of popular when we were back in middle school. So I guess that's like 2005, four, something like that. It was kind of blowing up, right? And for some reason, this BMX, I can't remember if there was a BMX series before this that they kind of like just did a, a spinoff of kind of, because it was, you know, it was back when Tony Hawk was, was huge. And the whole premise of the whole Triple X is literally exactly like it sounds. It is BMX with porn stars at do you just I'm like, why are there naked girls in this game? What? Yeah, and I think like on a bike tricky. What could, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, you could you could play shirtless, right? It had like yeah, straight up boobies. Yeah, it had boobies yeah, in it, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The wildest the wildest game um concept. Wow. I I believe How? no, I wanna be I wish I was a fly on the wall for that. That marketing uh, conversation? <laughs> yeah, because you're like, hey guys, I can imagine it's like, hey guys, what if we had BMX but with boobies? <laughs> it's called BMX Triple X. And there's a guy in the, in the back, he's just like, oh my God, let's do it. That's 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 literally, I feel like that's just what happened. Because I mean, like, Conquer's Bad Fur remaster. Day was also something that was a thing, which I didn't think it was that bad. You know, not playing it, but then like you hear stories, you're like, "What the heck? What, what's this like squirrel? Like, why is he so, why is he so thirsty? Yeah, why is yeah. he thirsty? <laughs> why is he thirsty? <laughs> oh well, we should we should uh, take a break now, and then we're gonna head on to the news after the break. But uh, yeah, everyone, stay with us. We're gonna be back, and remember, you know, uh, oh god. My mind, I was just like, stay thirsty. I'm like, no, that's not what you want to do. Stay hungry, everybody. Stay hungry for that bread. That's the that's the name of this <laughs> that's the name of this week's episode. Stay thirsty. <laughs> stay thirsty. Yeah, that's uh, guaranteed. Oh man, we'll we'll see you after the break. Hey, Jen. Never thought about making a podcast all the time, except for we are already making a podcast. No, but I mean, like a different one, maybe a better one. Um, sure. Yeah. So I was on the internet. I was trying to figure out like, what's the best host for a podcast or, you know, pretty much how can I make a podcast? And I think I settled on Anchor. We're already using Anchor, buddy. Wait, are you, are you serious? Are we, are we actually? I'm, I'm actually serious because it's free. And of course we're on like Spotify, Apple podcasts and like Google podcasts and so many other places. Well, how do we do that though? Uh, I, Anchor did that for us. Oh, just like automatically, right? Anchor yeah. just distri distribute your podcast for like free. Exactly. Wait, I thought oh. you did the research. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't. I mean, I kind of did, but I I do know that Anchor will help you make money from a podcast. Cash money, cash money, cash money grabs. Exactly. That's how we're making money right now. I think. Absolutely. Of like course, right at this very moment. At this very moment with this sponsorship. Well, I mean, also Anchor has some pretty cool creation tools that let you record and also edit your podcast right from your phone. Or your computer, because I know you got one of those, probably. Uh, I do have a computer, but I don't have a phone. Ah, uh, well, whatever. You can still make a podcast, because in 2020, there's no reason why anyone shouldn't have a podcast. Everyone deserves a voice. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well, Anchor is uh, just everything you need to make a podcast, but just all in one place. You can download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Enjoy the show, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, welcome back, everyone. We hope you had enough to drink, enough to eat. Hope you took a nice break. If you're listening to us in the car, well, we hope that you're not eating or drinking and driving safely. That's the best thing you can do in 2020. Yeah, you need a de you need a designated uh, food giver, I guess. Uber Eats. I uh, no, like when you're driving, you can't <laughs> hire a person from Uber Eats to sit in your car and feed you. That's weird. That would be beyond. That'd be beyond weird. I mean, this week we did get Kanye 2020, yo. Oh, no. For I praise. don't even know. I don't, <laughs> don't want to talk about that. Are you going to oh, vote for Kanye? You have to, like, write him in, I think. I don't I don't even think he can technically. Oh, yeah, not, yeah. Are you going to do it? No. Do it? <laughs> Abs absentee vote, yeah. So My one, funny. It's like every, once in every four years, you get one vote. And, you and you're gonna, you going to use it on Kanye on West. Kanye West. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. oh, I, I, I no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well uh you know next year is coming up and apparently nba 2k 
2021 is going, it isn't apparently, it's going to happen. It's going to cost $69.99 on PS5 and Xbox Series X, and there's no free upgrade. We've, we've seen a couple of games, you know, like Cyberpunk, and even games for Xbox Series X say that if you buy it on, uh, if you buy it on PS4, you'll get a free up, or, you know, or Xbox One, you'll get an upgrade for free to the next gen version. Well, that's not the case here, and it's plus $10. So the question now is, are we going to see the price hike in games for many titles. Are we going to be uh, hitting seventy dollars games? Uh, no, I mean that's a really good question. Actually, um, I can't remember the last time we had a jump. So here, okay, well, I as a person who purchases or used to purchase at least a lot of games with Canadian dollars, uh, we had a jump from sixty CAD to eighty CAD. Um, but that wasn't due to generation in or jump or anything. That was due to the value of the dollar falling. Oh. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so ne next gen, or I guess current gen games, all games basically are, are 80 CAD. Uh, but with everything considered, like we would, or usually we would be tied to, to USD for, for video games. So for mm -hmm. a time, uh, a 60 USD game would be also 60 CAD. But I don't remember, I, I just don't remember in my, in my life when we had an increase like that, because... I didn't start earning money to buy video games until like in my adulthood when it was already set at 60. Uh, mm. Do you know like when it was PS2, for example, or PS1, like what was the average cost of, of a video game? If you re oh, if you remember, I don't I don't you know, I don't remember that far on what PS2 was. Yeah, PS2, sure. P P I, I feel like PS2 was still forty nine ninety nine. It was still, you know, I, I okay. remember it was forty nine ninety nine. And then for. Uh, it looks like 2005, you know, with 360 and PS3. That's when uh, we jumped to 60. That's when we, that's when we jumped to 60. Yeah, yeah. So now, so okay, so then we had PS4 was the same. So you think PS5 would have another ten dollar jump to 70 USD for a video game? Oh man, I I, I hope I hope not. I, it, what what? And and I'm getting the news from uh, Kotaku here, and it seems like you know third parties are free to set their own pricing and we we actually like i remember this actually happening with this is kind of ironic this was 2k uh if i remember back when they were no longer a, i mean the license for i think nba or was it nba and also like madden it was madden there we go the license for the nfl was about to expire because it used to be nba or not nba but nfl 2k series and then madden so you had a choice right and then EA's like, nah, you, we just straight up bought the lights, the rights. So 2K decided to push their games for 20 bucks a pop, brand new, 20 bucks. And they outsold, like they were killing it. Because I remember like all my friends like, yo, man, it only, it's only 20 bucks. I'm like, you can't hate that. It's only 20 bucks. It's, that's like the perfect price. And now they're going to be the ones to jump us up, potentially. I don't know if everyone will follow suit or if this is going to be like a triple A title thing, like for mm -hmm. Last of Us Part 3, which sure, may or may not be like whatever. 70 CAD or something, yeah, or FF7 70. Remake 2 or something. Right. And I mean, like, because living here in Japan, this is actually the normal ish price of games. Oh, uh, yeah. Ga games are expensive in Japan for sure. And goodness, they're expensive. 70, uh -huh. 80, 90 just for the heck of it. I. And I, I don't, there's no real standard, you know what I mean, here in Japan? Like, no, I, I yeah, don't know why it, some cost 90 and some are 80 and some are 70. It is really weird, yeah. I, I, I think I told the story on the podcast before, but when I first came to Japan as a student in uni, um, that was around the time that FF13 had just released in Japan. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I came here and, and I went to an electronics store and I was like, oh, let me look at video games because I love video games. And FF13 on the shelves was retail <laughs> i think it was 9000 yen or, nine, or, yeah, or 9, it could have been over 10k but that was the msrp for final fantasy 13 uh and at the time with the exchange rate to usd that would have been like um 90 dollars to 100 dollars and that is the msrp for ff13 yeah and, and that, that was, was not a special yeah. edition that was just a normal no that was, that was like, a normal yeah, game and, that was a normal and people you know people were buying that like without question they were just like that is the price of this of this game. That is the price of of this media, and I will pay for it. So, and I, I don't think it, and I, maybe we have talked about this before, just about how like Japanese media, for some reason, physical media, it doesn't matter that it's on digital, and digital doesn't even matter. Like they have it for the same price. I, I and it, it it bugs me so much for 
for certain things. And I was just like, why, why is this the same price as I, I could get it for physical? And then there's no merit. And then it, it's just so expensive, but no one really questions, you know, people just buy it. It's norm. Can't question what you don't know is off. Yeah, I think that the ball has been too. Um, I, yeah, we did talk about it. We're like uh, around like the anime. same time too. Yeah, yeah. anime exactly. Yeah. Like, but Blu-rays. So you would. Uh, I don't. I can't. I haven't bought a Blu-ray in Japan for a while. And I think it's they're still really bad. But you would get like one Blu-ray which has like two episodes, maybe. Yeah, maybe um, two. Or three. So that's like. Yeah, they're like what, like forty-five minutes of content, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and that's like what, like six thousand, eight thousand yen, sixty, eighty bucks, like just for yeah. So if you wanted to buy like the full series of K on or something, you'd be paying money, like a lot of money. Right? Pay your money, pay your money. A lot, a lot of money. So it's it's pretty pricey. And then CDs as well. Uh, you want to buy like a single on iTunes? That's five hundred yen as opposed to a dollar in America. In so. It's so weird. That's and I actually yeah. asked someone in the music industry, like, why is it like that? And you know, there's apparently there's different fees. You know, there's like the fee for iTunes. There's the fee for Jasserac, which is the their licensing agency here in Japan for you know for media. And then there's the the agency, and then there's all this stuff. And they're like, and that's why it comes up to be more than a dollar. I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. it just it just seems very uh very pricey. So um. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I think you get used to it, but you also don't get used to it. So, yeah. Um, well, I, I pay for, I pay for Spotify now, but when I do pay for music, I usually buy it on like Bandcamp or something, or I use the Canadian iTunes store just because it's cheaper. Yeah, I yeah, that's I, I don't blame. Yeah, that's, that's what I do for a lot of my my games, except for Steam. But we'll <laughs> we'll skip over that. Hopefully, the prices won't go up uh, across the board. Hopefully, this is just something that Two K is doing. And, you know, in, in, in other games, when they feel necessary, if, they, if it's something that's really cost them and they feel like they it's worth that $70, then I, I think it's fine. You know, they have the right to charge that and we have the right to either buy it or buy it on sale. There's so many sales that, like we're talking about, like, honestly, wait, wait a month. It'll be normal priced again. Wait six months. It definitely will be. Yeah, there's a subreddit um, called, I believe it's called Patient Gamers, where they basically... Uh, wait sounds like for, a counseling group <laughs> right gamers. and they just wait for sales it's typically they're PC gamers because most of these sales are, are you know on Steam or GOG or something but uh, people will just discuss games that are on sale that you know they were waiting for or something like that oh man well hopefully like I said that won't go up too much across the board and, well, how do you uh, feel though I want, yeah, sorry, how, I want to, how do I feel yeah like real quickly mm -hmm. I mean like is that fair to, to charge 7th Seventy dollars, seventy USD for a AAA game, uh, considering you know development costs and how much it, how much money it, it may it costs to, to make a AAA game. Is that fair for you? And when would you consider it to be not good value? I think it would be so. I, I think it's fair for me as someone who feels relatively informed on the industry. Uh, if if I see like a AAA game and I think, okay, well. For me, like, okay, we went up another gen. In theory, I feel like it should cost more in my mind, right? I feel like maybe that extra 10 bucks, maybe it's justified. But if I'm, you know, just everyone else, if I'm looking at this, I'm like, why Why is it costing more? I don't, I don't understand because in theory, I mean, in, in actuality, it's literally last year's game. This is a year by year game. So why is last year's game and this year's game only with the year in between. Why is it costing so much more if you're just upgrading some graphics? You, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, right, right, right. Uh, so, and then, and so in, in my point in terms of like, when does it become unfair is when it becomes standard across the board. Because we've seen that with so many titles this gen where, and even last gen, like, why are you charging full price for this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it depends on the game. Yeah. So if it was a sort of Last of Us, you're like $70 is acceptable. Is it is it acceptable in my in my mind? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but if it's like NBA Two K whatever, you're like, no, I'm not paying somebody for that. N no, N no, <laughs> I can't. So do it. it's in your weird. mind, is it it's it's perceived quality or is it like number of gameplay hours? So what if it's like a mediocre game, but you have a hundred hours of gameplay? Oh gosh, this discussion. The, the... is that fine or no? Oh, because gosh. it's not a good experience. It's not a good hundred hours. See, or if you take 100 hours divided by $70, then that's fine. 
Cause see, this is this is like the the journey discussion, right? Journey was I don't remember if it was full price or flower, you know, those kind of games where mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. they're literally like two hours or less, but they mm-hmm. cost as much as or maybe even half the cost of a, a full Just game. Just some but, other games, right? Yeah, and you're like, people are like, I, I, I bought this and I got like five hours out of it. I can say that when I was a kid, I literally bought Zone of the Enders. I bought mm-hmm. Zone of the Enders and I beat it in 12 hours or whatever. I played it one, one two days. I, be, I Yeah, it was two days in the summer. And then I took it back to GameStop. And I, I took it back and I'll, I'll never forget this because I regret doing it. Uh, I was in middle school and I just said to myself, I bought this game and I beat it too fast. I literally took it to them and said, I beat it too fast. Can I get mm-hmm. an exchange? And as time has gone by, I feel like games, oh, now it's definitely games as a service is just su- such a big thing. And you know, you have that on one side. And when it comes to me paying full price for a game, I, you know, I don't pay that often, but when I do, I feel like for me, it, it's worth it. You know, this is, I, I want to support them as much as possible. I, I, and, and, and for me, it's like, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll bite. It's okay. This is the one of maybe three full price games I buy this year. But mm-hmm. if I'm, if I'm a kid and I don't, you know, I, this is, this is my one game and you get not that much time. It's, it's, I mean, I don't know. Like it, it sucks. It really, it really does stink. I don't know how to, de- how to describe it then. Cause I, it will be me all over again telling my mom or dad like can we take it back i think uh, yeah i think there's two ways to look at it one is like the not the hours you'll put into a game so it's like a hundred hour rpg and you pay 60 bucks for it uh i think that's pretty good value right 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 but i mean there's the other side of it where the comparison that a lot of people make is like if you go to a movie the movie oh man how much money do you spend per hour of entertainment which is, it, and when and you think about movies too, you're actually paying about a third of the cost of a game now in a pretty big city. It's typically right. almost twenty dollars and twenty dollars, and you're you're in there for like what ninety minutes, right? Yeah, you're in there for. But like if 90 you if you go and you watch like you know, I don't know like Spider Man, like Spider Verse in like two or something, mm-hmm. um, or whatever whatever Marvel movie is coming out this year, yeah, how many people? on average, walk out of the theater and say, that wasn't worth my money. That wasn't worth it. Because it's at that point, it's not a dollar per time question. It's a dollar per like imaginary satisfaction unit, right? Right, right. So if you get like X number of satisfaction per dollar uh, for that movie, and you can apply that to games, like let's say Journey, which is really short, but people really, really enjoy. some people would justify that cost just because they enjoyed it so much. Right, right. And it, it's, you know, it it's hard to really kind of put it because it's so, it's based off of your perspective, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's it's so, in trying to relegate it to kind of, kind of everyone, I, I don't know. Like I, for me, like I said, I, I am fine paying it, but kind of trying to remove myself from it. And, and if, I go and think about Marvel movies, right? Marvel movies to to me have become like disposable income. So before it was something I was excited to see. And then it became something I was continue, like, you know, wanting to continue to see. And then it became something I was like, okay, well, I'm filling in the the blank of the story. And, And I can honestly tell myself that the more Marvel movies I watched over the, over time, the less enjoyment I got from them. It wasn't, you know, because they they feel the same. They have a couple of the same jokes. You're kind of like, okay, you know, I'm I'm just watching to keep up with them. But I only watch them once a year, and I think that's mm-hmm. the that's the, the 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 thing. It's literally maybe once or twice a year I go to the theater, and that's my one. It's my one time. So I'm I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go. Might as well. And 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 that kind of negates the. I think I'm setting myself up for. Regardless, I've accepted the cost and the time. And how much enjoyment I'm going to get out of it. So it's it's almost like being an informed consumer in that sense, right? I think that right, helps. Okay. I think that helps. So, I don't so know if that you, the you question, feel but. like yeah. So you feel you you don't mind spending that mon- much money because you know you're going to get X amount of mon- minutes out of it, right? Right, right. I kind of have a gauge uh, interest or what I I feel like I'm going to get out of it. I, so yeah, I think video games are, are different in the sense that 
uh, everyone gets different value out of a video game. Uh, and even if you know how long a video game takes to complete on average, like that might be different for you. Uh, also, mm. some people do multiple playthroughs of video games. Like, uh, if I only had one playthrough of Nier, I would probably think that game is terrible. But, you know, because I did multiple playthroughs of Nier, then then I got I got my value out of it. I got mm. my, how much money mm. did I spend? Like 7,000 yen or something? But I would say I got my value out of Nier, right? Yeah. Despite the fact that I did not spend 70 hours in Nier, um, I still feel like it was well justified. And I, and I think maybe that's a little bit ish what's and i'm going to ask you a question after this but kind of going back to last of us part two in terms of like i can see honestly I, and i haven't read the criticisms i know what some of them are but coming from a purely gameplay pr perspective like i said it's not that much different from last of us one it does do a good job of what it does but it is if you really want to look at it, if you really really want to look at it you're really just going through a kind of stealth section or however you want to proceed through it section with different variables right same mechanics not too much things changing and then after that it's searching for stuff and then after that it's usually uh kind of the action section again and then after that it's a um story cutscene right and sometimes the it's very much a rhythm it is so much a rhythm that i i know when it's going to happen and, and and like when i go back and i think like can I play this again? Do I want to play this again? I've gotten my enjoyment out of it the first time, but if I'm someone else, would that annoy me that I, I did the same thing again and again and again, and I paid 60 bucks and it's been hyped up and this game hasn't come out for seven years. Do you, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. do you, would you feel I, I, I looking from that perspective, I would feel let down. Like, if, and I don't know how the reviews went. I don't know what they said. But if that's one of the points, I can see it. I can I can 100% see it. Sure. Yeah, I, I think it, it depends on, on on how much of the game... Uh, yeah, I guess how much you get out of it. Like, if you don't enjoy that kind of gameplay, then you're probably not going to feel like it was worth it, right? Did, is Has there been a game in the last, you know, I don't know, last couple of years or whatever that you felt has kind of let you down in that in that sense? That you you paid, but you didn't get your money's worth out of it quite? Or didn't meet your expectations? Uh, that's a good question. And it's tough to say because there are games where um, I buy but then just don't finish. And, I, you know, that's separate. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what you're saying is, are there any games that I was looking forward to and I had the intent on playing and beating but then didn't and then felt let down? Is that what you're saying, right? Not like, oh, that's on sale on Steam. I'm going to buy it but then don't play it. Right, right. Like you bought for full price and then felt like you didn't get like that, that value. I don't, that's tough to say because of, <clears throat> part of what you're asking is um, games of that I, that I had certain expectations for. I, I could say like, for example, Monster Hunter World, mm -hmm. which is a very good game, but, and I paid full price for it, but I didn't finish it and I didn't, like I didn't even finish the, the story, like the main story. Right, right. But I'm not let down by it uh, because mm. I didn't have a certain expectation for it. Like I didn't like tell myself like oh you're gonna be playing monster hunter for the next year i didn't tell myself that right so i wasn't disappointed by it so uh i don't know really uh, it's a, that's a really tough question to answer like i i might maybe oh my god i don't know probably some of the other rpgs west core nx like uh lost fear i am setsna uh mm. and to some degree even octopath traveler Okay. Like I really, really, I really, really wanted to like those games. Uh, but, you know, especially something like Lost Fear or something, which was hyped up as mm. being inspired by Chrono Trigger, which is a game right, that I love, right. right? So I really wanted to like that game, especially when they're like, in their, all their marketing, they're like, oh, do you know, hey, you specifically, do you remember Chrono Trigger? We got, you know, more of that. But I just couldn't. I just wasn't hooked. I just wasn't like really, really into it. In fact, if anything, I was just like, oh, I might as well just go play Chrono Trigger again. It's a, it, yeah. And, and I can't even think of it like a game I've just been let down. And, and I think what it, what it really comes down to is just like in music or just like in any other media that you do buy, over time, you, you understand it. Hopefully, hopefully over time, you start understanding your likes uh, and dislikes and your expectations, right? So like now when we buy a game, whether we play it, we half play it or whatever, we kind of 
know what we're getting ourselves into. You know what I mean? Like we we're making more of a conscious choice uh, as to how how we see ourselves playing it after we've mm-hmm. bought it. And I think that just goes w- with age and hope. Hopefully, you know, people. Does it justify the price tag? I think that is something that you kind of go in, maybe do some research, maybe look at some reviews if you want to. Uh, read the reviews. Don't just look at the scores or we recommend it. Just read what the reviewer wrote. Look at some gameplay online and say, hey, this is this this seems like it could be for me. You know, like when I bought um, when I bought uh, Dust Diver, I am literally like, I, when I found out it was kind of like more of a Dynasty Warriors game, I was like, uh, mm-hmm. it, it looks good. It looks fun. It looks fun. And that is what I'm going into. I'm just going to be like, it's fun. It's not going to like make me go, this is amazing. I, I doubt it. But if it does, that's awesome. And But what I'm going in is thinking, okay, just let me get my Dynasty Warriors, get some Persona in there, and I should be happy. And that's it. I'm expecting like maybe 12, 13 hours and I'm done. Sure, yeah, and I guess you're saying that if you get if you get at least 12, 13 hours of gameplay out of it, you're not going to get disappointed. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah. you feel like it would be worth your money. And I feel like it would be worth the the money I paid for it. Yeah, I think for a recent example, it was Trials of Mana, the remake, which came out in March. Mm, mm. Uh, that was 40 USD, I believe, 50, 50 CAD maybe, so pretty pricey. That's actually quite expensive. For um, an exact one-to-one remake of a... Well, I, I mean, that's perceived value again, right? Right, right. But uh, I know some people are just like, it's too expensive for what I paid because it's a fairly short game. I want to see, let me check my Steam uh, log time right now. So I have 34 hours uh, in Trials of Mana, log on Steam. Um, a little bit of that was grinding. A little bit of that is like me starting a second playthrough, but just not finishing. So which let's is, say 30 hours. Which is uh, pretty for, standard, I think. For, for 40 USD. And I think some people are like, that's too much to pay for this particular game. Mm, mm. Uh, but I didn't mind it. I do agree. If I had to be a little honest, I would say that's more than I was expecting, but I wasn't let down by the game. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mm-hmm. hurt as badly. Right, right. Right. I think if I paid uh, 80 CAD for it, yeah, I would say that's a little too much. So um, I think they priced it just as much as they would get they could get away with it right yep that's what happens and uh i guess we're gonna we're, we're we actually went deep on that topic like i was just like okay this will be a little a little starter point for the news oh, and it's like this, for news this became the news all right well let's move on no <laughs> no nah, yeah. nah, it's good it's good you know we don't have i mean we do have like deep discussions but we don't all it's not every podcast like last podcast our deepest discussion was about chicken nuggets and hey i bought the newest hey we were talking about the kawi burger yeah i tried that on the weekend oh how was that one i tried the uh, yeah i tried the mighty beef burger (laughs) yeah yeah you you said you liked it right it was kind of weird right i didn't i still don't understand why it's canada like the sauce was good but i was just (sighs) like canada yeah what 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 what's the canadian in it yeah so i tried the kawi burger it was honestly pretty good and it's probably the sauce that made it by the way because it's the typical yakiniku kind of sauce Mm mm-hmm uh, so I have one more burger to try. That's the smoky barbecue burger smoky. from England. Yeah, well, another so one gonna, that's like. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. Maybe I'll, I'll put in a little Uber Eats order tomorrow or something. I don't know. Yeah, I was I was trying to figure out. So no, I went yesterday to grab the spicy nuggets at night, and they're like, "I'm sorry, we're sold." out. I was like, "No, no, they're gone." I need, yeah, at least for now. I, I like maybe if I go down, you know, go for lunch or something, they'll be there. But I did try the. Uh, I did get the uh, the black thunder. Uh, McFlurry. Oh, McFlurry. Mm. Yeah, good. Yeah, mm. that was good stuff. You know, the, yeah, the, the that's peanuts legit. Make it, it's good. I don't understand why they have to make it like a Gente thing. Like, just sell it <laughs> normally. <laughs> yeah, that's like half a McDonald's menu throughout the years. You're like, just sell it normally. I, I know, yeah, uh, I can gosh. understand like the 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 schemey burger, which is seasonal. So schemey is like it's it's literally like moon viewing, and mm-hmm, it's a mm-hmm. seasonal thing because in Japan, I think in the fall. It's fall, that's I think. What, that's what you do. It's like moon viewing season. Right. Uh, so they sell a skimmy burger, which is basically just a burger with a friggin' fried egg on it. Because I guess I guess the yolk is supposed to be the moon or something. They can't put uh, cheese, so. I, yeah, I but I, I, I totally understand the skimmy burger being seasonal. But when it comes to, like, Black Thunder, that's not 
a season? Just sell that. I feel it's like even really... the McFlurry isn't just there all the time. It's it's like, oh, here's a McFlurry, and then here's the ah, oh, what is it? like they have so many different things that they just kind of rotate in between, and you're just like, no. Well, the McFlurry is always there, but it's always Oreo. So in Japan, you can only get one McFlurry. It's the hey, Oreo that's McFlurry. That's the classic. That's the classic. Yeah, and then like I think they have uh, at least I don't know if they still have it. It's called the Choreo. So that's Cho. Oreo, like big, like which super? means like super Oreo, because oh. they just put like they put like a shitload of Oreos. They just in they there. just make an Oreo. They just crunch up yeah, a bunch of Oreos, and you're so like, much "Where's Oreos. the ice cream at? <laughs> Where's the ice yeah?" Cream? So it's that's called the Choreo, and then I don't know if it still have it, but in, in now or maybe not anymore is the Black Thunder McFlurry. But it's it's really good. They should just normal normal that. They should, they should they should normal it for our hearts. Anyways, uh, what's next? Yep. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we hit, we're like over we're in we're in like OT right now. We're in overtime, but uh, yep. the world ends with you. Uh, uh, the animation had its mm. uh, official trailer kind of teaser release, which I, I I still have yet to play it. I own the game. I have tried to boot it up. It has been on iOS uh, for a while. I don't know if they've taken it down or not. But oh yeah, and it's on uh, Switch now. Actually, if you want to play I, it on Switch, I just want to know: Does this game make sense? I mean, does this anime make sense to you? Like, the what do you whole mean makes sense. <laughs> what, whole, what do you mean? Like? like, the whole thing about it that was so good was the gameplay, right? And the story was, sure. I guess, fine. I mean, there wasn't yep. anything like just amazing for it. But like, why? Why does this exist? Well, I think the art style really lends itself to an anime. Uh, mm. The story itself is just very anime-like. Yeah. Uh, so I, I believe making it into an anime isn't quite unexpected because it really lends itself to to an animation uh the question is why like why now uh yeah, why 10 years now? later is or it, something the more than 10 years later yeah like, like 13 just... years later um uh the question why is a good question uh i don't know maybe maybe either leading up to a sequel which would be pretty exciting it should be good but then they'll have to figure out how to do that dual screen well they just might not they just might not do, do the dual the, screen combo the, one, the, um, the only mechanic <laughs> the mechanic the straight mechanic that made that because the switch only has one screen and the phone only has one screen that's true that's true so what they what they did basically was they, they took away control from your partner so if you played it on the ds uh you control both right Top yeah so ne neku touch. neku is on the touch screen you control him with your stylus and then you would use the buttons to control your top character on the top screen mm -hmm. and you would use both at the same time uh, but since the Switch and the whatever phone only has one screen, they basically just took away uh, partner control. All right. Well, we'll so. see how we'll see how it goes with this anime. I don't. I don't think there's like a complete like uh, air date right now. But well, uh, just 2021, I think they said. 2021 is faster than uh, Edge Runners. 2022. I was like. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll be watching this with the Olympics. Who knows? Uh, and then also last week we had Ubisoft's Hyperscape. I, I really want to say hyper scrape because there's so many skyscrapers in this, you know, tall it's hyper It's hyper scape. Sounds like a terrible name. <laughs> I don't know why you would think that. I don't it know why you would think that. The art just keeps putting itself in there for me. Uh, but it's new uh, Battle Royale, which apparently is coming from the Division creators. And I will say the look of this game looks, and I was talking to a friend about this earlier, it looks like it's a YA novel. It looks like it came out of some young adults movie like uh oh, like, divergent anamor or... like anamorphs sure <laughs> it, 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 seriously the, the 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 tone the color you just look at it it looks kind of like that there's all these triangles anyways it's like dystopian looking or utopian dystopian uh but it it looks pretty interesting i've i've looked at a, a couple streamers play it and just break it down it does do something different at the very end the very last ring instead of you know being the last team standing there is a crown and there's a kind of king of the hill game that goes on so you so you want to get the crown and hold it for 30 seconds and then you actually win uh, a couple of interesting things that i found about the game was when you die you actually just can roam around you can ping the enemy you can just you know you can basically be surveillance uh and whenever someone else does die their body leaves behind a respawn point. So not only just you, but you know anyone can go to those respawn points. And as long as your teammates there to meet you, you can get brought back into the game. And this, you can do this as many times as you want. There's no limit on this. So I thought that was that was pretty. Oh, cool. that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. game could just never end. Yeah. Well, well, that's that's what's crazy. It's, I think it's a hundred people, but you can definitely do that in you know, like third party and then like someone third parties again and this third parties and all these people are waiting to spawn in the, and you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it seems kind of cool. And there's a lot of vertical mobility. So that's where they're trying to, 
distinguish the game is a lot of these kind of boost functions. You can fuse weapons. Uh, you can pick up the same weapon multiple times to upgrade it, uh, make it more powerful. And the time to kill is really high. I mean, really high. Uh, really? It's it's like four or five seconds starting so out. So it's four to five seconds. So that's like With a the machine gun going on somebody. That's like a arena shooter. It's like Quake or something it's, when you yep. fight someone with full stack. So yep. like full stack of health and full stack of armor. That's, Very long time to kill. That's what it's kind of looking a little bit more like the more gameplay I've looking at. Yeah, it, it resembles an arena shooter very much, but just in a battle royale skin um, with a lot of uh, upward traversal jump platforms, uh, kind of hacking mechanics where you can teleport, you can bounce in a ball really high. Uh, yeah, that all sounds really fun and exciting, but I just don't know like how well it'll do, especially like in the market right now. So you have Fortnite, Warzone, uh, Apex Legends, PUBG. Mm -hmm uh anything else like those four i i don't even it, i think that's it right it feels like it feels like yeah. those are the, the main ones but like i mean i honestly feel like it's pretty like saturated like as a player mm -hmm. myself I, I only play apex i can't imagine anyone juggling more than two to three games right yeah especially in the same genre i, I think for for streamers it gives them a, something uh, a little bit extra to kind of bounce into for a little bit uh if they're not in in valorant maybe this is something that they can kind of move into crucible you know that thing did <laughs> it went into it literally reversed oh, yeah, itself like, into a, it went back in time right? it yeah. went back in time to like an alpha beta status i'm like yeah oh geez um but yeah well i'll be looking forward to more of that and uh, yeah closing this out well you know evo 2020 has been canceled you can look up on the reasons um i mean you can look up the reasons why and if you have an opinion on it, just, you know, let us know, like send us a tweet uh, or definitely leave us a voicemail what you think about it. And we'll read it on the show. We'll try to give an opinion about it. We, we kind of stay away from any of the kind of, new, I guess, not controversy, but, you know, just kind of those topics to say uh, that have been kind of going on in the world. Uh, and, and, and it's not that we don't have an opinion on it or anything. We just we just kind of want to keep the show f fun, light, fun, fast, fresh. <laughs> What did I say? Yeah, what did you say? I said fun, light, fun, fast, and fresh all together. Sure. Never yeah. say that again. Yeah. For, 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 for. Anyways, everybody. Uh, and that, that's pretty much it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I don't have anything else. Uh, I believe I will be a guest on a podcast about uh, the Drive With Us podcast. Uh, on oh, cool. The, that's yeah, exciting. July 17th, you'll be able to, I will be recording uh, and I'll have more details when it goes up. But this is a, it's a pretty cool thing. The, it's uh, two girls in America who are talking about like their experiences, not their experiences, but just sharing everyone's experience who writes in or who calls in uh, just about their driving experience. Uh, you can hear me talk about how my driving in Japan and, and in, even in the US, how I, uh, <clears throat> I'm such a perfect driver. You can hear some fun stories there. So I'll let you guys know cool. a little bit more about that as we go. Alex, you have anything else on closing, man? Uh, no. I guess. No? That's it. Quick corner trigger. <laughs> it's on sale, by the way, for like the next four days. By the time this podcast goes up, I think the sale will have ended. But it, yeah. in, case you're, in case you're a time traveler... <laughs> go back Chrono Trigger, yeah, I guess. Yeah. If, you, if you're a time traveler, go back like Chrono Trigger and BMX Triple <laughs> Oh, that's funny, yeah. And you can also play Guilty Gear X and Core XX. You can just fill your lives with X's. Um, maybe you'll finally hit the spot. You know, X marks the spot for greatness. Anyways, until next week, episode number 41. And I guess we're almost about time for a new season. We'll catch you later. Remember, enjoy what you do. You set the tone. Go play some games and enjoy your life. Be a nice person. And we'll talk to you later. Peace. Peace. I said that really, I said that really strongly. Sorry. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>